Today I'm winning a game with every team in Major League Baseball, but whenever we lose, I have to give my opponent our best player. We're starting in the NL West with the Giants, and they're going up against the Pirates. I'm really hoping we don't lose this first game, because we would have to give up our ace pitcher in Logan Webb. We're in prime position to get off to a hot start, and Wilmer Flores is going to do just that to get us on the board first. Pirates have two runners in scoring position, but Webb strikes them out to end the inning. We haven't given up a run, but Webb really struggled in that first inning, so it's really important that our offense keeps pouring it on, and Crawford's going to do exactly that. We have a runner in scoring position with two outs, and Wade hits this one hard, but right at the shortstop, and that's a big missed opportunity. Thankfully, Webb got back on his game, and Flores is going yard yet again for his second home run of the game, as the Giants already have a 3-0 lead. San Francisco definitely got a bit lucky facing the Pirates, and Jock Peterson's gonna obliterate this one to center field, and Sawinski's gonna try to get to this one, but it's not going to happen, as they have loaded bases with one out. Keller has not been good today, and he's gonna hit Estrada for an RBI hit by pitch, and they have their bullpen in for Blake Sable, but that curveball had no business being left that high up in the zone, as Sable drives that one into deep right field, as it goes all the way back and bounces off the wall for a bases clearing double, as that was a big eight run fifth inning, we've already won game number one. I'm wondering if the Padres are gonna have a bigger challenge, and they certainly will with the Houston Astros. The Padres offense already doesn't have Juan Soto, as Verlander's gonna block that one with his foot, and that's a really unlucky break. Thankfully, San Diego still has Blake Snell, but he's facing Jose Altuve, who's gonna drive this one into center field, as he's rounding first, headed for second base, but this throws an absolute rocket, and he is thrown out. That was an incredible throw from center field, as this one is still 0-0. Both pitchers have been dominant so far, as Machado hits into a double play this time, and I'm definitely starting to get nervous. I really don't want to have to play this game again with Fernando Tatis on the other side, so I'm really glad he's able to double here, and all we need is a single to score him, and Garrett Cooper is going to deliver right up the middle, as we finally break the tie. I can relax a little bit more since we've taken the lead, but I'm definitely still scared of Houston's offense, as we're thankfully able to turn a double play. We're only three innings away from winning this game, and Kim gets going with a double, as we're already putting another runner in scoring position, but he's gonna decide to take off for third base, and that doesn't look like it's gonna be a very good decision, as the throw comes in and he is out. I'm gonna be really mad if that costs us the game, as that ball is hit hard, but right to third base, and that's another scoreless inning. We only have to hold on for three more innings, as Tatis hits this one, and that's just a beautiful play from Jeremy Pena to get the first out. Just one bad pitch from Snell could lose our lead, but he's done a really good job today against one of the best hitters in the league in Jordan Alvarez, and against this whole lineup as he retires the side. Houston's turned to their bullpen, and it's our nine hitter going deep, taking advantage of that absolute meatball, and giving us a very needed 2-0 lead. We're in a bit of trouble in the eighth inning, but thankfully Suarez is gonna force this pop-up, and luckily our offense scored some insurance runs, giving us enough run support to close out the Astros and move on with the challenge. That was a tough game, but the Dodgers should be easier. However, this game might be more challenging than I thought, as they're going up against a playoff team in the Rays, but LA's out to an early lead with this Will Smith home run. We can't count out the Rays as they have two in scoring position and Lowe absolutely belts this one into right field as this one gets down for a double and they take the lead. The Rays would take Mookie Betts for us in a rematch if we lose this game and I really don't want that to happen so we're hitting this blooper into right field that's gonna score a run. We need Kershaw to keep us in this game but he's gonna allow another run so there's a lot more pressure on our offense as Hayward singles and James Outman's up as he's going the other way with this one and this one's gonna go off the foul pole for a go-ahead two-run shot. We're finally back on top, but Kershaw is not giving us an easy time, as we're once again tied up in the ninth inning, and Max Muncy may have just made me the happiest man alive, sending this one way back deep into right field, where it's gonna be caught at the warning track. The race can end it, but we're going to extras, and with runners at the corners, we just need a single to send one home, and thankfully Ahmed Rosario comes through, as this could be the start of a rally, and Freddie Freeman scores our third run of the inning, which helps us put away Tampa Bay. The Rockies are one of the teams I'm worried about, but thankfully they're playing Detroit. I'm concerned about Colorado's pitching, but Flexen's actually doing well so far. But if we lose this game, Detroit's gonna get Nolan Jones, and I really don't want that to happen. Bryant's up with Jones at first, and it looks like we're finally gonna see a run, as Bryant's gonna smash this one into the left center gap, and Colorado is on the board first. Chris Flexen's given us a really good game, but he has a runner at third, and we're a bit late getting to that one, as the tying run scores. We really need to keep this a 1-1 game, but Kerry Carpenter finds the gap, and that is certainly gonna score the go-ahead run. We're down one in the eighth, and this is not looking good, as Carpenter smokes this one, to score another run. And this is gonna force our first rematch of the video, except this time we have to send our best player, Nolan Jones, over to Detroit. I just lost that game about six more times off camera, so I'm gonna have to come back to it later in the video so I don't go insane. Instead, I'm playing with an actual good team in the Arizona Diamondbacks. However, this game is way closer than it needs to be, but Corbin Carroll's gonna launch this one deep into right field and put this game on ice with a solo shot. We're seeing the Rockies again, but this time is the opponent for the Cardinals, and that Paul Goldschmidt blast
Blast is making me think this is gonna be a long game for them. It's only the first inning and we've already gone deep. And here's another one from Lars Notebar. Is that line drive's gonna leave the yard? And the Rockies are really off to a bad start in this video. The Pirates are next and they're taking on the Angels. We're facing Otani, but already have two in scoring position and we're gonna drive both of them home on this single. And I'm definitely surprised with how well this team's played out the gate as there's another two RBIs. The Pirates definitely surprised me with this win. So I'm gonna try to win this game with Colorado and we're already off to a much better start. I really don't wanna have to play this game again and thankfully Charlie Blackman's gonna score a run here. This is still anybody's game, but Chris Bryant's gonna help us out, blasting this one deep into right center and over the fence to give us a two nothing lead. It took six tries, but we finally beat the Tigers with Nolan Jones on their team and the Brewers are up next, taking on Cincinnati and Mark Canna's got this game off to a hot start. This is an early scoring opportunity and Contreras is gonna drive this one to score Canna all the way from second. However, Brandon Woodruff is not off to a good start as Fraley rockets this one down the third baseline and Cincinnati's gonna take the lead. Milwaukee would tie it up yet again, but Mark Canna really got a hold of this one, driving it to deep center field and that one is gone for a lead-taking home run. Milwaukee would only extend their lead from there as they pick up a big-time win against the Reds, who happen to be the next team on our list and they're going up against the Twins. If you watch my Imperialism video, you know what the Reds can do and Jake Fraley is gonna score the first run of this game. They're already up 1-0 against a playoff team and Spencer Steer is gonna send this one deep as he's looking to add to this lead and is gonna do exactly that with this solo shot. The Cincinnati team has a ton of young talent, but Jake Fraley is gonna drive this one deep to right center, watching it go and it is gone for another Reds home run. It really feels like we're leading by more than three runs and Matt McClain's gonna turn on this one, launching this one deep into left field where it's gonna sail into the seats and that lead's gonna be too much for the Twins to come back from as Cincinnati picks up the win. We're on our last team from the NL Central and Seiya Suzuki wants to make an early statement with his first inning solo shot. However, the Mets would score two runs and we're in trouble in the ninth inning, but Morel's gonna double. It's nice to know we're out of double play range as Ian Happ's gonna hit this one down the third baseline, which is gonna score the tying run. There's still only one out, however, and plenty of time to score the go-ahead run as is gonna hit this one down the first baseline to put runners at the corners, but it looks like we're going to extra innings. I really don't wanna give them Cody Bellinger, so we need to win this game, and this double's gonna score the go-ahead run, and there's still only one out, so why not go deep with Seiya Suzuki for his second home run of the game to make it five to two and help us pick up a big extra innings win. I'm really not excited to play a game with the Nationals, but at least they're facing the Rockies as this missile is gonna stay fair down the right field line and Washington has a leadoff double. All we're gonna need now is another hit to score him and we make it happen with Joey Manessis as that's a one nothing lead, but Chris Bryant comes back with a two run shot. Neither of these teams have great pitching, so I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of offense in this game as Luis Garcia gets going with another deep double. Steven Strasburg's in hot water again in the second as this one is obliterated to left field and this could be a grand slam going all the way back to the wall and thankfully it's gonna be caught. We have runners on but need to score them as I tried to check swing but that one's actually gonna work out in our favor as it's gonna load the bases except our guys coming home but thankfully that throw is gonna be offline and we tie the game. That was a crazy way to tie the game and now we're taking the lead on this double to right field. However, neither team has good pitching and there's another home run from Chris Bryant. Colorado's already in their bullpen and that one's gonna be hit right back at the pitcher but I also think it's gonna turn into a base hit and it's completely offline which is gonna score a run by rule. This one's over and I'm definitely glad that we only had to play the Rockies but even more relieved that we're done with the Nationals. Three out of these last four National League teams made the playoffs so I'm really not worried about this being difficult but I still have to rely on the wheel to not screw me over and it's definitely not as we're playing the Oakland A's. The Phillies are two years removed of a World Series appearance so I'm not really worried about them losing to the Oakland A's and they're already in a good spot with a man on third and Bryce Harper is gonna score them. No surprises here, Philadelphia picks up the win. The Mets are the next team up and it looks like they're taking on the Cardinals. This is kind of an interesting matchup between two teams who missed the playoffs after making it in 2022, but I think I gotta give the advantage to the Mets in this one. New York already has runners at the corners and Francisco Alvarez just blasted that one out of the park to left field for a quick 3-0 lead. The Mets bats are hot and they're only getting hotter as Daniel Vogelback drives this double back into right field and anyone that watched the imperialism knows exactly why I like Danny V so much. This actually ended up being a pretty close game, but those first three runs ended up being the difference in this one. The Marlins are next up, and this could be a very interesting game, as this battle between two National League playoff teams is tied, but Jacob Stallings is putting an end to that, blasting this double into the gap to score the first run of the game. We only have a one-run lead, but thankfully Perez is dealing on the mound. This is easily the most dominant pitching performance of the video, and it's definitely gonna save me here as he turn a double play. That was honestly one of the most boring games I've ever played, but shout out to our pitching for keeping us in it that long, as I definitely think this next team's gonna make for a much more exciting game. The Braves are taking on the Seattle 
Seattle Mariners, and right off the bat, Ronald Acuna Jr. is going the other way for a very easy double. I thought we might have some trouble since we're going up against Luis Castillo, but so far that has not been the case as Ozzy Albies is scoring the first run. We still haven't gotten out yet as Austin Riley is looking to continue this rally, and with Matt Olson at the plate, that's exactly what's going to happen as I literally blinked and it's 2 nothing. However, we're not going to stop there as Marcelo Ozuna joins the fun, going up the middle for the third run of the inning. That first inning was more exciting than the entire last game, and Seattle's getting going with four runs of their own to take the lead. That's seven runs in the first inning alone, and a very timely Ozzy Albies homer, as all this offense after a one-run game just goes to show that anything can happen in baseball. We overcame Seattle's four runs, and Rosario blasts this one into right field to make this an 8-4 to four ball game, and we've officially won a game with every National League team. We're finally in the American League, starting with the Texas Rangers, who are taking on Arizona. This is a World Series rematch, but Marcus Semien's gonna tie it up with this solo shot in the top of the seventh as the Diamondbacks just lost their lead. This game's in extra innings, and it just got interesting as Lowe's gonna double to score a run, and there's still plenty of time to score more as Duran's gonna square this one up. Every run increases Texas's chance of winning, and Corey Seager might have just iced that one as Arizona can't get their revenge. I'm begging for my favorite team to not let me down, but that Mike Ford missile's gonna score the first run. Suarez hits this one deep enough to score run number two, but not for long as Mike Ford, of all people, is going to deliver again with a solo blast. I really wish Seattle's offense was this good in real life, as they completely dismantled Pittsburgh. We've had some challenging games so far, but I'm definitely bracing myself for this game with the Oakland A's, as the team this wheel lands on could make or break this whole video, and thankfully it's going to be Colorado. We still have to play the game, but I can breathe a little bit easier, especially as we hit a nuke in the first inning. However, we can't get too comfortable, as this game's tied, and Rooker's looking to change that, blasting this one deep to left field, and I think it has the distance to get out for a two-run bomb as we take a lead. And thankfully, that was going to be enough to get the A's the win. The Angels are up next, and this one might be very easy as that is a first-pitch home run from Moniac. On the day of this recording, Otani was apparently seen flying to Toronto, and others say that he's going to sign today, but I still have a gut feeling it's going to be the Dodgers. But I'm sure this video is going to come out after he signs, so we'll have to see what happens as he helps the Angels pick up a pretty easy win. The Astros are next up, and they're taking on the Red Sox, as we're going the other way with this double to score the first run of the game in the second. Houston's definitely not a team I'm worried about in this challenge as Martin Maldonado is going to get involved with a two-run line drive shot into right center. I feel like we have a big enough lead to start simulating, but that's always a risk in this type of video because you never know when your pitcher is going to have a meltdown, so why not score another run? This ended up being a pretty easy win as we're getting out of the West and into the Central with Minnesota starting out with a bomb. There's only 10 teams to go as Kurloff is going to make it back-to-back -back home runs on back-to-back -back pitches. That one had no business lingering over the plate like that, and we're going to take advantage every single time. That was a crazy opening statement from Minnesota, but this game's tied in the seventh inning as Jeffers lines a double. Taylor has a chance to break the tie, but unfortunately he's gonna fly out. This game's gonna come down to the wire as Pablo produces another 1-2-3 inning. Literally one run may decide this game, and that is an absolutely crazy play at first base from Naylor. This is the closest game we've had in a while as we're in extras and Taylor's gonna pop this one up deep into center field, and I think that's gonna be deep enough to allow our runner to score from third. We need to close this one out, and I'm really glad Duran's on the mound, as he retired the side and Minnesota gets the win. Kansas City's next up, and I'm definitely worried about them, especially since they're playing the New York Yankees. This is the exact type of game I was afraid of, as Freddy's going yard! Let's go! Stay fair, baby! And no, it's gonna drift outside the foul pole. I hate my life! I apologize for getting emotional about that, and let's go, Freddy! I don't apologize anymore! Freddy Furman is my best friend in the whole world. He had to tease me with the first one being outside the foul pole, and he went back to nearly the same spot, but manages to to keep this one fair. We're gonna need all the runs we can get against the Yankees. Is Stan sending this one deep, driving this all the way back into center field, but thankfully it's just barely gonna stay in the yard. Somehow we still have the lead in this one, and we're gonna get two aboard with a single. I think all we need is another hit to score a run, and that's exactly what we're gonna get, as Bobby Witt Jr. is gonna score easily from second. We've definitely caught Cole off his game, and he's gonna take his anger out on Freddy. Real ones remember the Royals franchise, as I had absolutely no business swinging at that pitch, but it's somehow gonna bounce through the infield to score another run. And honestly, I was really prepared to have to retry this one a ton, but somehow we're scoring another run on that sacrifice fly. Cole Raggins deserves a lot of credit as he's striking out Stannon, and I almost feel like I can just simulate this as that's another complete inning. However, I'm not simming against Aaron Judge, and that curveball was nasty, and somehow we have a chance to put this game away and complete a shutout, and here's another RBI. I was prepared to play that game like seven times, but somehow we're gonna get a win without even needing to give the Yankees Bobby Witt Jr., and I can move on to the Tigers who are going up against the Mets. We're facing the other New York team, and Senga's first pitch is gonna be one to drive, as Badu sends this one deep 
into center field and we're already on the board. You can't have a better start than that and Torque's gonna add to it as he elevates for this fastball out of the zone but it doesn't matter as this one has a lot of carry and it's gonna be a 3-0 game. Anybody that's watched my channel knows that I'm like the streakiest MLB to show player ever but apparently I'm having a pretty good game as this is gonna become my third homer of the game. Between the Royals game and this game we're on an absolute roll as the Tigers are gonna pick up a 10-2 victory. Those games surprised me but I've spent so much time rebuilding bad teams on this channel that I guess I'm used to it as there's Jose Ramirez. I'll spare your time as that was an absolute massacre, but I'm hoping this game between the White Sox and the Phillies is just a little bit more exciting. Philadelphia is a playoff team, but Chicago has plenty of decent bats, including Trace Thompson, who can absolutely mash righties. We have an early scoring pitch, and I'm going to try to turn on this high pitch, but it goes right to second base. Our pitching has not been great as we're down two runs early on, and Benetton gets his revenge chance, and he's going to capitalize tying this game back up. Some extra run support would be nice as Andrew Vaughn's going to answer, going oppo, and that one's going to stay fair, and that's a three-run shot as we've scored five unanswered. Like I said, there are a lot of bats who really hit well in MLB The Show, but Dylan Cease only allowed two runs, and we are done with the AL Central. There's five teams left, and they're all pretty good, but we've got an interesting game as the Blue Jays trail the Orioles by one run, and Springer's gonna double in the eighth. However, there's two outs, but Brandon Bell is gonna hammer this no-doubter out to right field to give Toronto the lead. So many of these games have come down to the wire as Mountcastle pops up, and another run would be great for security as Merrifield's gonna drive this one deep into left field, but it's not gonna leave the yard, but we need to close this out with Romano, and that's exactly what we're gonna do, as there's only four teams left. The Rays are up against the Padres, and their Cy Young winner, Blake Snell, but we're getting some hits early on. We're gonna find out if this team's the same without Juan Soto, as Brandon Lowe gets Tampa Bay on the board with a three-run blast. As it turns out, the Padres are good, but they're not the same team without Juan Soto. However, I'm kinda glad he's on the Yankees, because we're gonna need someone to come up big in this tie game against Milwaukee. Judge and Soto don't have hits yet, but that was bound to change, as this missile's gonna score the first run for either side. We finally broke the tie, and maybe that's all we needed for this offense to wake up as Soto watches this one go deep to center field, and it's suddenly three to nothing. After that, the Yankees had no problem getting the win. As we're moving on to Boston, and there shouldn't be any problems in this game, and Jaron Duran's going deep on the first at bat of the entire game. I thought Kansas City used up all their magic against the Yankees, but Bobby Wood Jr. is gonna prove me wrong hitting this RBI single up the middle. It'd be embarrassing to lose at this point, but Trevor Story's gonna try to not let that happen, going yard to left field. The Royals managed to put up a pretty good fight, but the Red Sox were just too much for them. We're moving on to the last game of the video, which will be against the Miami Marlins. This is a battle between two playoff teams that's off to a hot start, as Adley Rutschman's gonna double into right field, and this will definitely score the first run of the game. We have a chance to add to our lead with runners in scoring position, and Arias will do just that, going the other way to sneak this one through the infield to score our second run. I feel pretty comfortable with our lead right now, as Gunnar Henderson's gonna pull this absolute missile to get aboard with a double. The Orioles are probably one of my favorite teams to watch in all of baseball with all their young bats, and one of them just hit a two-run bomb to extend their lead. This game is going great for the Orioles, but you can't rule out Baltimore, or maybe you can, as O'Hearn is going to smash this one for the second home run of the inning. We completed the challenge in dominant fashion, as I won a game with every MLB team. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. Please drop a like and subscribe, and click right here to see more of my content.